So, these are my thoughts on the 50-50 conversation. There's a lot of women who feel as though going 50-50 is settling and that's something that they will not be doing which is fine but then the other side is are the ones that don't mind going 50-50 so the logic everyone tends to point out is that when you're by yourself and you say that you don't want to settle then you're going 100% as opposed to if you are in a relationship and both people are contributing uh, and let's just say the split is 50-50 for the sake of the conversation then that people you you get to save you get to save money that way because only half of your money is going to expenses and the other half uh, it's up to you to do what you will with it and you're the manager of it so I'm not quite sure why it's settling but I just wanted to bring to your attention that when you think about a woman and I know there's controversy about what a woman is but everybody knows what a woman is there are people that are playing dumb and then there's people that stand ten toes down so women remember God said it was not good for man to be alone And it was at that point that he made woman. When his thought was, you know what? And that's not to say that God didn't know. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird in this way. And if I can go on this tangent. So the Lord knows everything. He 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 is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So that means that he knows what man needs from the beginning because he's wise and all knowing he knows this so then you have but then as you're reading you're reading it it, we're reading it as how do I say this There's a way that we're reading it that's different from the Lord's perspective. Because the Lord sits on high. His, the, the word says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Which means that we are only seeing it from a temporal plane. We, can't, we cannot see the end. Matter of fact, I had a friend say, we can't even see one second in front of us. So, um, in that regard when we're reading it and it says God saw that it wasn't good for man to be alone and then he made woman he's just telling us his thought process and he's showing you the manifestation of that by having a man and a woman and the Bible in describing men in the scriptures it is clear that it says that he pisses against the wall. The only species of our of mankind that does that is the actual man. So So anyways. So you have man creating woman. And then it tells you why she was created to be a helpmeet. Okay, someone who assists the man. 
I, again, we're going off the etymology of the word. This is what it means. It means to help. That's all it means to help. And so you have women that say, I am not about to help a man. Okay. So God said, this is what woman was created for, to be a helper. And already you're saying that you are not going to help a man. You have an issue with womanhood. You have an issue with womanhood. Let's take it even further. Ruth was a woman who was married to a man. And within a span of time, her husband died along with her brother-in-law who she was also in close proximity with his wife and they were in close proximity to these men's mother and it came to pass that these men's mother told them like hey I'm not going to have any more sons for you to marry so you might as well go back to your home you know you might as well just go back to where you came from and the one the brother-in-law's wife was like alright and she headed out but then you had Ruth who was like no, I'm just going to go ahead and stay here. And she's like, I'm going to worship the God that you serve. And after going back and forth a little bit and seeing that Ruth was not going to give up, the mother-in-law was like, okay, fine. So they hung out. <laughs> I shouldn't say they hung out. But yeah, they they decided that they were going to do this together. So it comes to the point where Ruth's mother-in-law tells her, like, I need you pretty much you need to get to work. She didn't say those words, but she pretty much was like, you need to get to work. Okay, there's some fields over here that you can work in. They're my kinsmen. You know, go go over there and work and glean this field. You know, gather the harvest of this field. And so Ruth goes and does that. And there she sees not only the servants who were working with her, but she also saw the owner of the field he obviously had to be a strapping young man and so when she went back home her mother-in-law ends up telling her and i'm giving you a real brief synopsis her grandmother ends up telling her go to the threshing floor because this is where this man is going to be go there and lie down at his feet And whatever he tells you to do, you do it. And so she does that. She goes and lays down at this man's feet there on the threshing floor. And he, he's actually startled by her upon waking up. I mean, because who is this, who is this chick laying in my doggone feet? I'm in here. You know, I I was working hard all night. I fell asleep out here in the threshing floor. and, And this lady, I wake up and she is here. Now, it is of my understanding, if I may interject my opinion after reading, that 
that not only means to physically go lay down at his feet that night because she ends up putting a blanket over him so there's you know they're laying down this is for this is night night time so she ends up putting a blanket over him um so it also means submission And we're not going to debate that. Because again, we've already learned that a woman is to be the help me. She's supposed to be the assistant. She's the helper. So that already means that you're not on the same level. The Bible says that the man should love the woman as the weaker vessel. She, we are the the women are the weaker vessel. We are the weaker vessel, and you can take that how you want to take it. Men are that have built this world up. They're obviously very intelligent creatures. Not only that, they're handy as a mofo. And excuse me, but I'm just saying I hear so many bad things being said. And man, when I tell you I love a handyman, my dad is a handyman. He can fix anything. I, I, I feel like he can fix anything. He, there's, I'm pretty sure there's things he can't fix. He'll, and he'll tell you that. But there's a lot of things that he can do just by watching somebody do it. Same thing for my husband very very handy my father-in-law is very very handy so and they make sure that i'm handy i i know how to change a tire now thank goodness someone has always come to my rescue at the point when i'm about to change the tire somebody always ends up stopping or and i'm i'm thankful for that men still do look out for me and even and if I'm in proximity to my husband or my dad or whatever they're the ones that look out for me I don't ask them to this is just what they do because they know (laughs) I'm the weaker vessel so She lays down on his feet. He wakes up and gives her some instruction. And he tells her where to harvest and all that good stuff. And then it comes to the point where she needs to be looking at this man as for a husband. She's she's got her eyes set on him as her husband. And they come to a point where he's like okay you know if no one else i hate to say this but i can't really think of another word at at this very moment but if no one else has a bid for your hand in marriage if no one else has a bid for you then i'll go ahead and do it she finds out that there's no other bidders and they end up getting married Again, that's a story, if I may. When I was getting out of college and I was going back to the place where I grew up, I say that because I'm a military brat, but the place where I spent my teenage to young adult years and I ran back into I guess I shouldn't say ran back into because I guess we were anyways my high school sweetheart 
And I just remember having to read the book of Ruth a lot. Seeing what she did and how she did it. And it was rocky. Oh, it was so, it was so bad. It was so bad. And I just remember not fully understanding why, but knowing that I had a goal and I wasn't to be in the streets. I was not trying to stay in the streets. I wanted to be married. I wanted to be a wife, family, all that good stuff. So in my eyes, and for what I felt like the spirit was telling me, I need to be like Ruth. You know, I needed to, A, be doing something. I need to be working. You know, Ruth was gleaning in the field to make money. I needed to be doing something. I saw, I I mean, I've always been a worker since I was 15. I, I started working at 15. I've always been a worker. I don't have a problem working. I don't have a problem getting my hands dirty. I don't have a problem lifting stuff and moving stuff around. Like, So. But it was the submission. Not only to the person that I wanted to marry, but it was... A submission to womanhood. Having that mindset like, okay, I'm going to have to help my husband. And I I don't know with what. Because again, he's handy. But I just knew that that was the assignment. That was the task. So. I think that's something that women are missing these days. I say if you want to be a wife, you need to. Read the book of Ruth. You need to read the book of Ruth. And something that just popped in my head just now is if you want to see what not being Ruth gets you, just look over in Esther. Just read the book of Esther. Esther was brought in to be looked at as one of the I don't the king's prospects. I, I don't know how else to say it. He he's got a he's gonna bring these ladies in. He's gonna keep the ones he wanna keep and the the rest of them gotta go. So this is a point where they gotta perfume, they gotta clean themselves up. And this is something Ruth says as well. You gotta clean yourself up. That means your attitude. That means your mindset and Esther, I don't even want to see, I'm not even going to talk about, I don't even want to talk about Esther. What I'm going to say is that the queen that was in, was on the throne when the book of Esther opens up, look at what she does and look at the consequences. I'm going to let you read that for yourself. Look at what the queen does, the response and the consequences. Okay, so that is my thought on 
how to become a wife. But what's also interesting is that these non-50-50 women are forgetting about Proverbs 31. And that's when King Lamel's mother is telling him about finding a virtuous woman who she says is you is rare she says and this modern uh, this this I'm sorry I did not mean to say modern woman this virtuous woman not only wakes up when it's dark outside to start getting her household ready getting everybody clothed including her husband and her kids getting everybody fed if she has to go outside the house to go do whatever she goes and does that doesn't matter if it's cold outside doesn't matter if it's snowing outside she goes and gets fine linen and makes things to go sell to the merchants that means she's working she's out buying fields that means she's investing and buying up you know she got her entrepreneur hat on which obviously the modern woman has no problem doing that we've heard it they got the Kevin Samuels clip I got two businesses what is that I got I got two businesses Kendra Kevin or what he said not Kendra I watched Kendra, Kendra show too uh, I got two businesses Kevin so they got that but she was doing what was necessary to contribute to her household she wasn't just sitting back while the man works and does everything she was contributing so I think that The line is being drawn, or the line has been drawn. It's always been there, but I think it's just becoming more and more visible because I, women are waking up like, hey, we're not getting chosen. And I know they don't, they want to claim that they don't want to be chosen or being chosen was a choice, not being chosen was a choice. You know, there's, what do they say? They're single by choice. But. This is not, I don't think it's true, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm with Usher. I'm with Usher. When he says, nobody wants to be alone. And nobody wants to be alone. If they found the man that they, the man that fit every requirement, she'd be trying to jump on it. So I don't believe that. Oh man. Um. I'm just going to make So this Proverbs 31 woman is the image of the woman that we saw in Genesis 
when God said he needed a helper for the man, when he needed to help me, for, that's who he was talking about. And it's described over in Proverbs 31. But again, King Lamel's mother said that that woman is a rare find. So that means that there is an issue with the way that us women are thinking and or conducting ourselves. Maybe the sinful nature of a woman is to not be a helper. <laughs> and maybe that's why, you know, you see the backlash with the modern woman and everybody's saying that they don't want them. They don't want a woman like that. You know, they'll bed that woman, but definitely not for a long term relationship. And that woman has gone, she's gone astray. She's gone astray from what God, because this is the book of Proverbs. I mean, the whole, all the scripture is for instruction. So we can be clear on that. But this is the book of Proverbs. This is the book of wisdom. Also said in the book of wisdom is he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Not everybody is wise. So that means if you are able to find someone to marry. Someone who. And you, you find a wife. That. <laughs> it's a good thing. So what does it say? And don't get me wrong because. If I'm not mistaken, it was Paul who was he had a gift of being single now if you have the gift of being single that's different from you being single because no man wants you the men let me rephrase that the men that you want don't want you the men that you want don't want you So, if we got back to being that helper, and we had the mindset of Ruth and Esther, and the Bible agrees with both parties submitting so don't get me wrong I, I'm not but I'm not talking about what men should be doing right now I'm not talking about them right now I'm talking about what women have to do because we can't anyways I don't want to go on another tangent about that. I just wanted to touch base on, again, this conversation about 50-50. So, sorry if you hear me. I'm about to make some waffles. 7.39 at night. But I love, I love breakfast food, so it don't matter to me when I eat it. Um, I just wanted to give my thoughts on the whole 50-50 conversation. Yes, it is smarter that you are going to say 50 percent of your money 50 percent of your money is going to go into the pot to share for expenses that's not a bad idea there's nothing wrong with that um if men want to pay the whole thing then okay fine let them pay the whole thing but 
I don't think that they should be obligated to pay it. Um, I think that, again, we have examples in the Bible like Ruth and the book of Proverbs, which let us know that we're supposed to be working. We're supposed to be contributing to the household. We're supposed to be making sure the husband is good. It says that, you know, the wife is supposed to be making the man look good in the streets. And there's a lot to be said about that. But I'm not going to let this go any longer. Those are my thoughts. See you next time. If you're still here, I thank you so much for tuning in. I apologize about all the noise in the background. I am in a transitional period right now, but I'll be getting back to a space where I can record and not have all the commotion. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I've got some deep topics coming. And don't forget about Life by Ortavia. That's my website where you can order home decor. I've got canvases, digital prints, pillows, blankets, water bottles, mugs, all kinds of stuff over there. So check that out. And I'll see you next time.